How does someone know if they're pre-diabetic? In the UK and America, it's estimated that one third of the adult population falls into this category. And each year, up to 10% of those individuals will go on to develop full-blown type two diabetes. So what is diabetes? Diabetes is where your body has lost the ability to manage its own blood sugar levels naturally. It's usually due to something called insulin resistance, and this is known as type two diabetes, and it's by far the most common type, and it's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. So to understand diabetes and pre-diabetes, you first have to understand what insulin is and what it does for us. Insulin is one of the most important hormones because it's involved in how we use and store energy. When we eat, it's insulin's first job to help us put that food energy to immediate use by shuttling the glucose in our blood that came from that meal into our cells. Insulin's other job is to make sure we don't waste any excess energy by storing it in the body. It does this in two ways. Glucose that isn't needed for immediate energy can be linked together in long chains of glucose molecules called glycogen. And with the help of insulin, this can be stored in our muscles and our liver for relatively quick access. But there's a limit to how much glycogen can be stored in this way. So the other way is, once this limit has been reached, the body can start converting that excess glucose into fat. And with insulin's help, this can be stored in our fat cells around the body. So what is insulin resistance, you ask? Well, this is where the cells in our body have become desensitized to the insulin. And our pancreas, the organ that produces insulin, then has to make more and more insulin to get the cells to respond. It's kind of like a parent who shouts at their kids to get their attention. With enough shouting, eventually the kids tune out, and so the parent has to shout louder to get their attention. Well, diabetes is when the pancreas just isn't able to keep up with the increased demand. And the result is high average blood sugar levels, which over time can damage the heart, our blood vessels, our eyes, our kidneys, and our nerve cells. Incidentally, type one diabetes is an autoimmune condition where the pancreas has lost the ability to produce any insulin. And in this case, insulin needs to be injected at meal times because without insulin, we die. So what about pre-diabetes? Pre-diabetes is when your average blood sugar levels are considered high, but not quite high enough to be considered full-blown diabetes. This usually means that you have developed insulin resistance before the moment your pancreas is able to produce enough extra insulin to compensate. Now remember, one in three adults are pre-diabetic, but many haven't been diagnosed and are completely unaware that they're on that slippery slope to developing type two diabetes. So let's go through some of the top signs and symptoms of prediabetes to look out for. But first guys, if you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Excess belly fat. Many of us carry more fat than we'd like around the midsection. Pardon me, sir, what's your point, sir? But at a certain level, it can be a telltale sign of insulin resistance. When our cells start to become resistant to the effects of insulin, the excess blood sugar, in a sense, has nowhere to go. It can't get into the liver or the muscles, and even our fat cells become resistant. And so it ends up depositing in and around our organs, and this is known as visceral fat. The word viscera refers to our internal organs in the abdomen, and it's not healthy to have too much visceral fat. How do you know if you might have too much visceral fat? Well, measuring your waist circumference is a good place to start. The rule of thumb is your waist size in inches should really be no more than half your height in inches. So if you're, let's say, five foot 10 inches tall, that equates to 70 inches. So your waist size should be less than half of that or less than 35 inches. Excessive thirst. The body tries to dilute the excess sugar in the blood by pulling water from our cells. And this can make you feel dehydrated and thirsty. If you've ever had a sugar binge late in the evening and then been really thirsty throughout the night, that's why. Frequent urination. The more you drink, the more you pee, of course. But also, if water is being pulled from the cells to try to dilute that excess glucose, the kidneys may not be able to reabsorb all that water. And this results in having to go to the bathroom more often. Fatigue or weakness. Our body's primary fuel source is glucose, which we get from the carbohydrates that we consume. Insulin helps our cells to use glucose for energy. But with prediabetes, the cells are not responding to insulin as well, which means our cells are unable to absorb the glucose they need to make energy. And this can result in feeling weak and tired. Increased hunger. For the same reason that we might experience fatigue from prediabetes, we may also experience increased hunger. 
If our cells are not responding to insulin, then they can't take in the glucose they need for energy. And in a sense, they become starved of fuel. And the brain tries to help by making you hungry. Get in my belly! Even though there may be plenty of glucose in the bloodstream. This can then lead to overeating, which can then make things worse. Blurred vision. Increased sugar levels in the blood can dry out the lenses of your eyes, making it harder for your eyes to focus. The good news is this is usually temporary, and when your blood sugar levels return to normal, the blurring should go away. But that said, type 2 diabetes is one of the leading causes of blindness, so this early warning sign should not be ignored. Numbness and tingling. Prolonged high blood sugar levels can damage nerves, and this is called neuropathy. With prediabetes, this might feel like a tingling or a numbness, often in the hands or the toes and feet. Dark patches of skin. This is a condition called acanthosis nigricans, and not to get too technical, but with high blood sugar comes high insulin, and insulin is a growth-promoting hormone which can stimulate some of our skin cells to proliferate, resulting in these velvety bands of dark skin, usually on the neck or the armpits or groin. So if you're experiencing one or more of these symptoms, it doesn't necessarily mean you're pre-diabetic, but you might want to consider checking in with your healthcare professional. They can run a quick blood test to rule it out. The really good news is pre-diabetes, and for that matter, more than 90% of type 2 diabetes, is reversible. All it takes is changing how you eat. This is one of the main subjects we teach throughout our courses at CNM. To find out more about our courses, visit our website, link in the description below. Now, if you want to learn more about some of the best ways to keep your blood sugar balanced, check out this video coming up next. See you again.